Hey marketing leader, today I would like to focus on communicating your value proposition on your website. Now this is a sticky topic and it's difficult to, to get right, but I think all that's left is to try our best. Okay, so let's see where we end up by the end of this video. I do have a few tips that are not necessarily website related because as you will know value proposition directly affects your entire organization and your consumers beyond the website so it only makes sense to cover a bit more of your business ecosystem and the way value proposition just just works and influences everything around it so let's dive in this is something we've done ourselves uh, as of late i guess it depends how you define as of late but Recently, we simplified our marketing message and I bet you can do it too. Maybe you've already done it, but then see again if you can simplify it even more. And what I mean by it is just to literally encapsulate it in one liner. What it is that your business actually do, how it helps the user, who does it help? Just just keep it simple, so called elevator pitch, I guess. We could we could call it that. But no matter how complex your catalog of product is, I bet you can simplify it and, and convey it in a simple sentence or two. Just take a look, see if you can expose the truth in a way that everyone understands whether someone is, is related to your industry or the consumer uh, themselves, or maybe a stranger on the street. I believe firmly that everyone, regardless of their education level, of their background, of their savviness on the topic, they all should understand more about your business without you helping them out with the missing pieces of the puzzles. Try to simplify your marketing message before you even dive deeper into the topic of communicating that value proposition on your website. While you're at it, focus on the customer. Really, sh show them that benefit Show them life before they approach you and after they approach you. So what, what it's like, give them that strong contrast, how you make their life better if they decide to work with you and offer a solution, offer a clear plan of action. And that, uh, that goes, I guess, beyond the value proposition because your entire website should have that storytelling side to it so that when someone reads the value proposition, they get what you do and they scroll down, they see progression, they, they get immersed in the story that you're telling. And at the end of the whole thing, they will know exactly where they are, what, they, what you help them with, what's the plan of action, what's the next step, and you have them, okay? So it all starts with value proposition, but you have to wrap it around with with clear objective, clear call to action, post-purchase experience, give them that too, it's fantastic because people might not know what happens next when they actually sign up to your service. So it's good to tell them that too, just to almost battle all the fears from the get-go. Try to identify them and get rid of them, basically. One thing I was a victim of myself and that is curse of knowledge and specifically jargon in my speech. I would. I would talk tech and people don't understand tech as well as I do. If you are watching and you have tech background, then you probably understand much more than people that just don't have that kind of background. But overall, we're working with people in marketing and marketing is not the same as software engineering department. So we try to use plain English. In one of the other videos, we explain how to write a copy for the website. But the, the nugget of wisdom from that video is that even a 13 to 15 year old person should be able to understand what you're saying. So it only makes sense to avoid jargon uh, like CPA, okay? It, it doesn't matter. Just, just say what it is, the cost of having a customer. Use plain English so that people can understand. Frankly, it might help to sell the ideas up the hierarchy in your company. Not everyone on the executive board might understand your language. If you are deeply rooted in marketing, you have background in marketing, you could have heard about things that are not obvious to people outside of your bubble. Again, leave out the jargon. I think it just helps in life overall and in communication. So leave the jargon out and you'll see that your website will be that much better off. One neat trick to 
communicate the value proposition a bit better on your website is to surround it with visuals. It's often the case that when you land on someone's homepage, the above the fold where the USB sits, it, it is accompanied by some kind of video or illustration, which is maybe animated or something engaging, interactive that catches the eye. And the reason why it says there are actually studies that prove that if you have an image, some kind of visual around the text, people are 65% more likely to retain the information that, that you know, comes of that uh, sentence, of that information, that, that piece of content. That is great clue, I think. You should always keep the visual aspect of the website attractive, but just don't overdo it. Don't make it stand in the way of digesting the content and risking decreasing the performance of the website overall. Make sure you keep accessibility first on your list and then the rest will follow. Next point on the list is fix your navigation. Uh, remember, navigation serves the purpose of helping people find the content they need and also to introduce them to your offering and, and your business overall. Navigation is probably the first thing they interact with and based on some user tests that we've done, people don't even scroll. They jump straight to navigation, click about page or services solutions or whatever you have in there. The, the number of items is, is important. You should keep it below seven, for example. So there are tips and tricks to, to make sure the navigation is actually maxed out in terms of performance. But on the basic level, on the principle of having basic navigation, make sure it's first of all there don't hide it in, in a burger, on the, in the, some kind of fold, drop down. Just, no, it's navigation. It should be there, accessible at all times. It shouldn't have any more than two levels. Probably if you need more than two levels, then you're doing something wrong and you can simplify it most likely. If you're lost in all of this, all, you can either do user test. Tree testing is fantastic for helping to fix your navigation. You can literally just get people from your target audience to organize data for you. Sounds perfect. <laughs> or you can get a, a, a user experience designer expert to help you out a bit. I believe that at this point, if you followed my advice, you simplified your marketing message, you left out all the jargon, uh, you have these benefits of your offering listed out, you have the solutions, you've created the plan of action for the user on the website, the navigation almost creates itself. I mean, navigation, at the end of the day is just a form of guiding the user through the content. If you have a, a complete story that has a beginning, it has the end, coming up with the navigation that works shouldn't be that difficult. You will at least get it at 80% or maybe 90%. I mean, then you have the rule of diminishing results. So you might consider if you really want to get to 100%. If so, seek a professional help maybe. Next one is create a network of internal links. And I am a big fan of letting people digest the content the way they want. I don't like to enforce on my website visitors the journey they should take, the perfect journey they should follow to accomplish their goals. No, remember, the website is for them, it's not for you. And if they like to browse the content their own way, let them. There's no reason to add extra level of complexity in their life. Their life is probably already quite complex and difficult as, as everyone else's. So just leave them to their own devices, create those internal links to relevant sections on the website, wherever you see fit. And if they decide to click it, follow up because they have a missing piece of information, they don't know something, they don't understand or something just piques their interest, just let them click it and read it. That's it. So. That's one benefit. Another benefit of internal links is it let, lets Google make more sense out of your content, out of your website, create this kind of sitemap, let's say, so that they can index it better. Win-win, 100%. So create a network of internal links, link pages together as much as possible. I mean, reasonably, right? If there is one rule I can say about this is there's no benefit of, uh, there's no benefit in linking to one page from a couple of places on a single page. So if you have already linked to a section from that particular page, there's no need to add another link somewhere below unless it makes sense for the end user, but to Google, there's no benefit in it. Finally, FAQ section. This is great if you want to communicate your value proposition. Uh, normally, it raises more questions, even if you've done it right. 
it, the, the question might not be around the value proposition, but there might be a question about what follows next. Uh, so FAQ sections are great to fight initial fears and initial doubts about your product, your brand, whatever. FAQ on a homepage or, or on service pages or in general, just FAQ page somewhere, whether it's condensed or scattered around your website, is fantastic tool to help user make sense out of what they are seeing is is great and it also in many cases that we've learned from our clients once we introduce faq section it reduced the load on their customer service department because many silly questions got answered on the website on the spot and the user didn't feel like they had to call up and ask the silly question saves money saves resources everyone's happy it, you probably retain that user longer on a website which is great for great signal for google so it again it's a win-win you can't go wrong with faq section so highly recommend it and that was it that's that was my final advice so if you follow through my list hopefully you can now better communicate your value proposition now i know all not all of those tips and, and those bullet points almost refer directly directly to value proposition on your website it, they could have circled around value proposition itself because if you don't get it right before you put it on your website then what chances are that website will help to communicate it any better they're probably none so do your homework first put it on your website leave out any jargon uh, create nice visual layer around it keep it visible at all times everywhere uh, where, where it makes sense Fix your navigation so people can actually dig in a bit deeper into your USP and your offering. Create that network of links, uh, add FAQ section where, where, where is relevant and you are in a right spot to convert more traffic, to get people to love your company a bit better and, and hopefully convert them and keep the sales department happy. So this is all from me. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments or get in touch with me directly somewhere on LinkedIn or Twitter. And in the meantime, I wish you all the best. Good luck with your website. See you around. Bye bye.